What's up guys, Brett Apple here from DailyFanMMA.com back with another UFC Quick Picks on the Mayo Media Network. We have UFC Vegas 42 this weekend, Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez in the main event. Should be a good one, down to 11 fights only, but still a fun card nonetheless. We got a live final now on DraftKings. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, steam picking up there, so it's very exciting to see for the MMA DFS industry. As always, I'm going to give you my favorite cash game play, tournament play, salary play, and my fade of the week for the slate. And before I get into that, make sure you subscribe to the channel here, like the video, and let me know who you like between, let's go 8.5 and 7.7K this week. Who's your standout play in that mid-range? I think we're going to see a lot more mid-range constructions this week than usual. Okay, without further ado, let's get into my cash game play of the week, and it's going to be Max Holloway at 9.5K. Okay, for cash games this week, I like Max Holloway at 9.5K. It's probably an obvious pick, but you know the drill with cash games. I'm going to give you the best plays on the slate regardless of price, and it gives me a chance to talk a little bit about Max Holloway, who is one of my favorite fighters in the sport, and it's just an absolute beast from a metrics standpoint averaging 7.26 significant strikes per minute he's minus 800 against Yair Rodriguez in the main event this weekend and whether or not you believe that's correct um Holloway is just a, a really difficult matchup for any opponent I mean Rodriguez doesn't really land takedowns at a high rate, lands less than one per 15 minutes. I don't really see him having much success on the ground. So he's got to beat Holloway over 25 minutes in striking exchanges, and that's just a really difficult task. Holloway's been one of the most durable fighters in the sport in his entire career, and it seems unlikely that Rodriguez is just going to land one damaging strike and put him away. He's an excellent kicker. He's got you know decent leg kicks. He throws spinning attacks. He's got... That back elbow KO over Chan Sung Jung, the Korean zombie, which was impressive. So nothing's impossible, but theoretically, Rodriguez is going to have to beat Holloway over 25 minutes. And that just seems like a tough task because although he's a skilled kicker and although he can compete in striking exchanges, he just does not have the same volume capabilities he doesn't have the same boxing capabilities his metrics check out fine averages 4.33 significant strikes per minute absorbing 3.13 but like max holloway has a level of volume that i don't know if any other fighter in like the history of the sport can match and he's coming off a fight against Calvin Cater in which he landed 445 significant strikes over 25 minutes, which is an average, I think, of 17.8 landed per minute. It's just, it's so far outside the normal range of outcomes that, you know, on one hand, it's like there's just no chance that's predictable. But it was only, you know, a, a few years prior when Holloway did something similar against Ortega. Landed 290 significant strikes in four rounds. Landed 134 significant strikes in round four against Ortega. There are fighters who go their entire careers without landing 134 significant strikes in a 15-minute fight ever. And he's capable of doing that in one round. And I, I don't think Rodriguez is going to look to like exchange with him in the pocket necessarily. So I don't know that Holloway's volume upside is as great in this matchup. But once he's able to close the distance and fight in his range, he's just a more effective boxer. He's going to throw punches at a higher volume. He's going to land them more effectively. And I mean, I, I consider him a strong favorite for that reason. The metrics obviously back it up. Minus 800 to win. He's got a decent inside distance prop at plus 150 currently. And at 9.5K, he's just safer than every other fighter on the board, bar none. Uh, such a high floor and an incredible ceiling, even in a decision. He's coming off a decision win that scored 209 DraftKings points. And we don't need a 209 DraftKings points in cash games, obviously, even... 95 100 would do but i think there's a pretty good chance that he can exceed that in a win the bottom line here is when we're looking for safety 
Holloway has it. Far and away the most likely fighter to win. Strong chance to win inside the distance. Very safe. 25 minutes to work with. Incredible volume potential. Holloway's going to be my cash game play of the week. And I don't think it's a terrible idea to stack this fight in cash games. I haven't like created my cash game lineup yet. But Rodriguez at 6.7K. Um, is not a terrible punt option if you need to save salary in cash games because this fight's projected to last uh, you know, over four and a half rounds is minus 150. Fight goes the distance is minus 135. So even, even when Cater got beat up for 25 minutes, he still landed 133 significant strikes. Rodriguez has some volume potential as well if you need the salary savings. Moving on to my tournament play of the week. This one, this was really tough actually because... I don't like I don't think there are many great options and there's some fighters in the mid range I could talk about you know the Baeza versus Chaos Williams fight should be good Jung versus Enzichuku should be good Rothwell versus Delima has some potential but like there's just no one standout fighter so the the sneaky range the sneaky range I think this week is 9 and 9.1K, which is Tiago Moises and Felicia Spencer. Um, these are fighters who I'm willing to pivot away from Holloway or to pay up with in tournaments because I think they have a lot of grappling upside, and I don't expect them to be as heavily owned anywhere near Holloway, for example. Um, Spencer's an interesting one against Leah Letson. She is minus 315 to win, and... She's a grappling dependent fighter and she hasn't looked great in the UFC, um, but she's fought very good competition, lost to Amanda Nunes, lost to Cyborg, coming off a loss to Norma Dumont. But her two wins are first round finishes, uh, first round submission and a first round TKO. Both came on the mat. She's a black belt in jujitsu. She's going to look to take the fight to the ground, get on top of you, take your back, submit you. That's her typical game. And there are certainly flaws in her style. Um, you know, she's not a, a phenomenal striker at range. She's not the greatest athlete or the best wrestler. So this is why this is a risk. This is not like a. This is not a, my typical standout option. However, she is grappling dependent to a degree, and so if we say Spencer wins this fight and she's minus three fifteen to win, I think there's a pretty good chance it comes on the ground. And if it comes on the ground, that's that's takedowns, control time, uh, non-significant strikes on the mat, and potentially a submission. She's plus 220 to win inside the distance against Letson. And Letson, I, I, I don't know that she's UFC caliber. She's only 5-1 and one professionally. She hasn't fought since 2018. Um, you know, was TKO'd on the Ultimate Fighter and won a split decision over Julia Stolyarenko, who's not really UFC level either. And um, I believe she's working with the Air Force, so she's you know she's doing other things outside of MMA. And I, I just I'm not certain she's going to come into this fight like not necessarily fully prepared, but I'm just not certain she's she's not on the level of a, an Amanda Nunes or a Dumont or a Cyborg. And so, in theory, Spencer does have an opportunity here to take this fight to the ground. Threaten her with a submission. I think Letson's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. In theory, Spencer should have an advantage on the ground. Spencer's going to be dependent on a finish at 9.1K, which is obviously a problem, and Max Holloway might just crush her score anyway if he goes out there and attempts 900 significant strikes like he plans to. Um, so there's a lot of risk here, but I don't think we're going to see a heavy ownership on Spencer. If you're looking for a contrarian option in this top range, I think she's someone that I personally want exposure to for her grappling potential, for her win equity, for her submission equity, and her ownership. Tiago Moises is the other one I'll, I'll briefly mention because it's a similar matchup against an opponent in Alvarez who doesn't defend takedowns, doesn't care to defend takedowns because he's a good submission grappler, 0% takedown defense thus far in the UFC. I would expect Moises to try and wrestle. There's no guarantee that Moises can submit him, but Moises is a black belt, should have a wrestling advantage, should have a grappling advantage. 
and should have a path to victory on the mat. So those are two fighters in Spencer and Moises who I think have grappling upside, which scores well on DraftKings, won't be extremely high owned, and it's a range that I'm willing to take a risk on in tournaments. Okay, moving on to my salary play of the week. I'm going to go with Marcos Rogerio de Lima at 7.6K. Again, this is not like my favorite slate in the world, to be quite honest. I'm going to be spreading out my exposure here. Um, the upper 7K range I like more than the lower 7K range. Lima, it's just mostly a play on a heavyweight underdog, which the heavyweight division has a ton of variance. Finishes are to be expected. And, you know, he's fighting Ben Rothwell. And, and Rothwell's... 40 years old or so, minus 172 to beat Lima. He's just, he's really slow. He, he's really slow and not particularly dangerous in any one area of the game. Um, I, I did pick Rothwell to win because as much as I'm willing to take a chance on Lima, Lima tends to quit. Uh, he tends to slow down and we've seen it time and time again. In the UFC, he's lost five times in the UFC, all by submission. And he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, so it's more than just not having a grappling game there. So I think there's a chance that even if Lima comes out here and has success early, Rothwell is able to find a, a guillotine choke at some point and finish the fight. But Lima's fairly explosive as a striker. I don't think he's at a super technical disadvantage. Um, Rothwell should throw more volume, but I think DeLima is very effective. DeLima also can wrestle, averages 1.14 takedowns per 15 minutes, has landed uh, six takedowns in his last three wins, so he will look to take this fight to the ground. Um, and I just think he's relatively cheap for his potential upside. He's only plus 250 inside the distance, which is a very strong mark for a 7.6K fighter. It allows you to save salary. It allows you to create a construction that doesn't lack upside. So um, I'm going to be taking chances on Delima here. Again, it's not for any one specific advantage that Lima has, but it's a heavyweight fight. I expect it to comp I expect it to be competitive, especially early. I think Lima can have success on the feet. He has some takedown potential. If he wins, there's a very strong chance he exceeds value. There's a chance he wins inside the distance based on that metric. Price is good. So Lima is going to be my salary play of the week. All right, and my fade of the week, I guess I'm going to go with Sean Woodson at 9.2K, which is the other 9K fighter I have not talked about. And it's just because I prefer Holloway, Spencer, and Moises in this range. And 9.2K is not a cheap price to pay by any means so Woodson's going to need a big score at that price to come through and I just have less faith in him than other fighters in this range because he's primarily a boxer and that's that's all well and good he can land strikes at a high volume but he's not like the best athlete he's not the best grappler he's not the most powerful striker so his chances of winning by early knockout just simply are not that high uh, let me check his inside distance line. He's minus 335 over his opponent, Colin Anglin, which is a, a you know a strong line to win. Plus 240 inside the distance. That's that's you know 10 points off Delima at 7.6k. It's not the worst inside distance line compared to this range. Um, so if you want to target him, go for it. I just I think Anglin has enough skill to at least survive the early portion of this fight. He's a more physical fighter than Woodson. Um, he has some grappling equity. Anglin's coming off a knockout loss to Melsic Bagdasarian, but Bagdasarian is a really dangerous striker, and he doesn't. Woodson doesn't quite pack the same level of threat on the feet as Bagdasarian does. Um, Woodson's going to have a big reach advantage, which should play into his hands, but... You know, I think England's going to look to close the distance, get physical, take the fight to the ground. And I expect him to at least survive a little while. This fight is, you know, minus 170 goes the distance. So if this fight ends by decision, Woodson, I do not think, is exceeding value at this price. Is not ending up on the optimal lineup. So he's going to need a finish. 
um, an, an early knockout, in my opinion, to have any chance at, at beating Holloway at this price, which I'm just not willing to bet on, especially in comparison to Spencer and Moises, who have, who have finishing upside as well, but have a lot more grappling equity, which is something that I think is important on DraftKings. So Woodson is kind of falls below the uh, priority list for me at 9.2K, and that's going to make him my fade of the week. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's UFC Quick Picks. Thank you for the support. As always, you can follow me on Twitter, Britt Apley, double T, double P, dailyfanmma.com for all your DraftKings breakdowns, needs. we got a full podcast coming up later this afternoon. Uh, rankings, projections, betting content, and more, dailyfanmma.com. And make sure, again, to subscribe to this channel here, Mayo Media Network. Like the video and let me know who your favorite play in the mid-range is below. Best of luck this week, guys. Take care. Stay safe. We'll talk to you all soon. Peace.